the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, everybody. Thanks to you all once again. It's lovely to be back home. I love your holiday, but it's nice to always get back home again, back in the world, into the routine of our daily masses, our weekly masses as well. And I say it's lovely to be back home. It's nice to be home to see you all once again back in church. Our mass today, even for four, is probably sort of Colin Cousins, but this week I'm celebrating masses for a week ahead for Francis and John Barley, Colin Cousins, Kate and Cole, Christine Nunes, our favourite department, and two private attendants as well. I do that for, for the sake of our um, recording today. Um, so we're going to have the 26th Sunday of all the time. Jesus said, us look very carefully at our lives. Does what we say and what we do mean the same thing? We're called to respond to God in our lives and show our faith by word and deed. And St. Paul tells us very simply, get our priorities right. We worship God, not the world. So we're not pulled away from our faith in Jesus. We hear today some wonderful words, remember your mercy, Lord. So place ourselves in God's presence. We first ask for God's loving mercy and God's forgiveness in our lives. We sent you the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the Christ. And on earth, peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, our oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, Above all by pardoning and showing mercy, be so we pray your grace abundantly upon us, and may God hastening to attain your promises, heir to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces into his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. The response, remember your mercy, Lord. Lord, make me know your, path, your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Remember, Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from above. Do not remember the sins of my youth. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember me, Lord. The Lord 
Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself, so that nobody thinks of his own interests first, but everybody thinks of other people's interests instead. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee of the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand to attend God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in my vineyard today. He answered, I will not go. That was thought better of it and went. Man then went and said the same to the second, who answered, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first they said, Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax gatherers and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a path of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax gatherers and prostitutes did. Even after that, you did not think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. A simple question for you all. Who or what has authority in your life? Because no matter who we are, we all are subject to authority in some way. And there are all types of authority. But in our personal lives, who or what has authority over me? If they carefully about their fundamentally two voices vying for our attention, wanting our, want to have authority over us. The voice of society and the voice of God in my life. Which voice do I take more notice of? Because they are not the same. If they want to put us away from the other. So we cannot follow both society and God at the same time. 
We have to decide and make a choice. Who will I listen to? Who will I give authority to in my life? We sometimes hear people complain that the church is always behind the times. It's so old fashioned. It's not keeping up with the world. If this that is true, let's thank God that it is true. The church will not get its authority from the ways of the world. The church gets authority from Jesus, the Son of God. It's the church's divine mission to proclaim the message of God and transform the world. It's not the, the job of the church trying to fit in with the ways of the world. Far from it. It's a church, it's a diocese, it's a parish, as Christians, we are accountable to God, not the world. Yet we have responsibility for the world. We are only accountable to God. For it is only God who can redeem us, only God who can forgive us, and only God who can, who can give us eternal life. The ways of the world have nothing to offer here. So again, who or what has authority in my life? We can't follow the will of God and the ways of the world at the same time. At the same time, we are far too different. Saint Paul makes it very clear in our second reading when he wrote the immortal line: "All beings in the heavens, on the earth, on the underworld, should bow the knee at the name of Jesus." Again, our loyalty is with Jesus, not the ways of the world. So we have to be brave, we have to be strong, and we have to be faithful. Live our faith to transform the world, and not allow the world to transform our faith and take us away from Jesus. Pope St. John Paul II once wrote a wonderful book called The Sign of the Contradiction. Explain how we as a church are called to be a sign of contradiction in the world today. Again, the way of the world are often not the way to God. We have to make a choice which way we are going to follow. It must always make us popular with the world, but will make us faithful to our Lord Jesus. Again, we are not accountable to the world, we are accountable to God. And our task as Christians is to live our faith and transform the world into the kingdom of God, not the other way around. This starts today, this starts tonight, by placing ourselves firmly here in church before our Lord Jesus, making the centre of our lives the voice who we follow, not the ways of the world. Let's try and be brave as Christians, and be some contradiction for the world to see, but that it may change its ways and try and build with us the kingdom of God here on earth. But as always let's do so with the love of our Lord Jesus in our hearts, living our faith for the whole world to see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we stand glad in you, friends. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Marcus, and normal church leaders that they will be faithful and fearless in their proclamation of the gospel. For those who find it hard to hear the voice of God in their lives, that they will, through our faith, find the voice of Jesus calling out to them to live with him and for him. For the world that struggles with the, truth, with the coronavirus, that we'll all do whatever we can to try to eliminate this threat from the world. Those who are sick and the housebound, may they feel the hindrance of our Lord Jesus, bringing them comfort and relief. For those who have died, and those who have the most to occur around this time, remember especially Francis and John Marley, Colin Cousins, Caitlin Cole, Christine Nunes, all our favourite departed. 
We pause for 50 words of silence and pray our own personal and private intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and grant all of our needs, which we make through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Bless thy Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Bless thy Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, we have now possessed the pledge of life eternal. Have received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom we raised Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the pastoral mystery. To all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration. Together we declare. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the twofold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope, Marcus our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, for the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to become ours to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace we grant peace in our days. Let by the help of your mercy, we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb God, you take away the sins of God and bless you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and bless us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and bless us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper 
of the land. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us stand and pray. <coughs> May this heavenly mystery, O oh Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we will recover us in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. We do have a bulletin once again um, this week, and masses are, are as normal as we have our usual set of masses that we have usually, so we can nice to be back to normal masses at least, even if things are very different in church and around the world. Speaking of which, just to say, there have been a few changes whilst I've been away with regards to funerals, baptisms and weddings. Whereas I'll explain very quickly, I think we are going to receive an update from the diocese sometime this week with some basic stuff. For funerals, when it's a working mass or a funeral service, numbers are still 30, thankfully. Um, 30 is not great, but that's better than 10 as it was a few months ago. So the most of the funerals is 30. For weddings, and baptism is now down to 15, which is terrible really. So um, I do have a wedding taking place in two weeks' time. They've accepted 15 people because they want to get married, and so they've been great and concerned. And so please give them in your thoughts and prayers and as they get married in two weeks' time, with just 15 people in attendance, sadly. And also baptisms are down to 15 as well. There was talk in the papers of six. This hasn't been confirmed, thankfully. So 15 is a little bit well for baptisms. Already I had a, um, a family from this morning who wanted to cancel. They were booked in for two weeks' time as well on Sunday. They cancelled. I want to wait until things get more, more back to normal. That may well be March or April next year before things change. So uh, I do apologise that things are so strange for numbers that attend the church. It's not my rules, it's just rules of the government. But the church has to apply. But, um, Speaking of which, numbers in masses are still going up and up, which is great, thank you, we are getting close to our um, maximum capacity with the two metre rule. Um, and the one metre rule is no longer an option, unfortunately. So it means that some do please, please, please book your place in mass. Um, do try, starting this week, the um, booking system will start on Monday morning and it will close on Friday, 8 o'clock in the evening. Because um, people are invited to act last minute and it means that the list are constantly out of date. So the last chance to book for a place in Mass starting this week is Friday, Friday 8 o'clock in the evening. So you have Monday morning until Friday evening to book a place in Mass. That's five days to book, so please try and do so if, if, if you can. If you can't, I do understand and hopefully if there are places left, will make an allowance for this, but do please try and book a place, whether it's online or by phone, it doesn't matter, but just try and book a place in advance, so know how many people we do have, and it, it, I do think eventually I'll have, I'll have to turn people away, because we are getting that full, so it's a nice problem to have, but it's also an odd thing to have to do, turn people away from that, <coughs> that full. but hopefully things will change in due course, and we'll get back to normal eventually, but so hope you, hopefully you understand saying about booking for a place in Mass. There's other things on here, but just please take on a whole a good read in your own time. And also, the Catholic family fast is taking place two weeks time. Envelopes are now available at the back of the church, and I think there's some maybe at the church, if not available next week, at the back of the church as well. But thank you all for coming. Do take care, keep safe, and have a good week ahead as well. The Lord be with you. Yes. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ending.